Assalamualaikum. Hi, my name is Aisha from MRSN Kuban Basu located at Kedah, Malaysia. So today I'll be presenting to you about a project that me and my partner, Han Nurdiana Sofia, has been working on entitled Alokasia Danudata Cream Formulation based on our primary research, stimulation of wound healing activity of Alokasia Danudata tested on DF1 chicken fibroblast cell. So first of all, what is Alokasia Danudata? Well, it is commonly known as yam and locally known as Kladi Chande or Kladi Chane. And you can find this plant in rural parts of Malaysia, such as Kelantan and Terengganu. Now, this plant here has been used as traditional wound healers for a very long time, but it has never been commercialized. The problem with our society is that wounds take a long time to heal, giving chances for, for pathogens to colonize it. So we believe that the stem crude extract of Alocasida nudata can be as an ailment when applied on the wound. Also, this study is targeted to reach further understanding on fibroblastic proliferation so that it can be used as an alternative to treat wounds. In our project, we have three objectives, which is first, we want to determine the cytotoxicity of Alocasida nudata towards the F1 chicken fibroblast cell. Other than that, we want to determine the concentration of alocasia that can proliferate the most cell migration. And lastly, we want to determine the chemical profile, anti-diabetic agent, and measurement of heavy metals in alocasia denudata. In our project, we hypothesize that alocasia denudata can stimulate a migratory effect, meaning that it can heal wounds. For the methodology, we started out with a sample preparation, where the stems of Alocasida nudata was taken and cut and put into a squeezer to obtain its juice. It was then centrifuged to obtain its supernatant, and we put it into seven different concentrations for us to proceed with our next procedure, which is the MTT assay. Now, this MTT assay was conducted to prove our first objective, which is we want to determine the cytotoxicity of Alocasida denudata towards the chicken fibroblast cell. So here are the results. As you can see here, the seven different concentrations are 2,000, 1,500, 1,500, 250, 550, and 5 microgram per milliliter. And as you can see, for the highest concentration, which is 2,000 microgram per milliliter, it shows 74% of cell viability, which is very good, meaning that there is no cytotoxicity. And what's interesting is that for 5 microgram per milliliter, which is the lowest concentration, it shows 110% of cell viability, meaning that not only that, that there is no cytotoxicity, but it even promotes more cell migration. So from that, we continued on with the cell migration assay. Now, this assay was for us to determine our second objective, which is we want to know at which concentration that can proliferate the most cell migration. Now the cells was taken and scratched to stimulate it as a wound and we treated it with two types of concentration, which is 1000 microgram per milliliter and also 5 microgram per milliliter. So here are the results when we tested the cells with 1000 microgram per milliliter. The graph shows that there is positive cell migration throughout the 36 hour. Comparing to the control, which is the untreated cells, by the end of 36 hour, there is negative growth, as you can see there. But what's interesting, when we tested it with 5 microgram per milliliter, uh, as you can see in the graph, it shows that there is a higher cell migration rate comparing to 1000 microgram per milliliter. And comparing it to the control, there is negative growth throughout the 36 hour. Uh, for clearer image, as you can see, this is the image that was taken using an image J. The cells were scratched, so initially you can see the gap. But by the end of 36 hour, when we tested it out with 1000 microgram per milliliter and also 5 microgram per milliliter, it shows that the cells have intact, meaning that, that there is cell, positive cell migration. Uh, comparing to the control, where you can see the, there is still visible of the gap and also the cells have scattered, meaning that there is negative growth, also complementing the graph that I had shown you just now. 
So from that, we decided to make a product, which is the Alokase Denudata Cream Formulation. So for the making of the product, 18 grams of Alokase Denudata stem that was cut were weighed and blended using a blender and was put along with 250 grams of water. The blended Alokase Denudata was then put into a pan and cooked at a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius, along with 6 grams of half go and 2 grams of katon, which is a preservative. The mixture was mixed well until it formed a cream base and the cream was allowed to cool and was put into a container. The product was then tested with three types of tests, which is the anti-diabetic agent screening, heavy metal test and also chemical profile. For anti-diabetic agent screening, we found out that there is no detection of any anti-diabetic agent in Alokase Denudata. And when we tested it out with the heavy metal tails, fortunately, there is also no detection of any heavy metals in Alokase Denudata, which is very good, meaning that Alokase Denudata is safe to be used. Other than that, for chemical profile, we found out that there is three main active compounds present in Alokase Denudata, which is lauric acid, fumaric acid, and also benzoic acid. And among these three acids, the highest percentage is lauric acid, which is 22.41%, which is very good because it contributes in the second wound healing phase, which is the inflammation phase. So for the novelty of our project is that we use controlled concentration of Alokase Denudata stem crude extract. Uh, bringing to the advantage of our project is that it is organic and easily made. And as you can see in the picture here, this is the Alokase Denudata planted at our school, which is MRS and Kuban Pasu. For the commercial value, our product is cost effective to be produced comparing to commercialized wound healing creams that are made for, from chemicals and synthetic drugs. For our further research, what we want to do is first, we want to test Alokase Denudata stem crude extract on human dermal fibroblast cells measured by expression of transforming growth factor beta one. And we will be collaborating this with USM, University Science Malaysia by the end of this year. We also want to conduct a clinical test for Alokase Denudata cream formulation and we want to commercialize Alokase Denudata cream formulation. So from our project, we can conclude that Alokase Denudata does not show any cytotoxicity even at the highest dose, which is 2000 microgram per milliliter, and it even induces a higher migratory response when used at the lowest dose, which is 5 microgram per milliliter. Alokase Denudata cream formulation is proven safe to be used as a traditional wound healer, and it contains active compounds that helps in the wound healing process during inflammation phase. So what have we owned throughout our project here? Firstly, we have gotten the patent number for our project on March 2020 by Malaysia. We have also gotten the copyright number for our research on February 2020, as you can see here. And we have also won the gold medalist in national tunas scientist competition on February 2020. And we have gotten, we have received grants by Mara Education Division for us to pursue on with our project. This is the uh, mostly referred reference from our, uh, throughout doing our project. So that is all for our project. Thank you very much.